Jay Shetty is a former monk and motivational speaker who's followed by over 20 million people worldwide. He went from being bullied as a child for being overweight and nerdy to living as a monk across India and Europe and becoming one of the internet's biggest celebrities. And today we're gonna to learn his best advice on how you can uncover who you truly are. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I bring you a shot of Espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning, I believe in you, and let's do this. Over to you, Jay Shetty. There's a thought that I love which says, you know who you are when no one's watching. Like what you do when no one's watching, that's who you are. Yeah. So we all know when we're alone whether we choose meditation or Netflix. Like we know when we're alone whether we choose... For, for a lot of people out there, whether they choose uh, reading books and learning or pornography, right? You know when you're alone what you choose. Yeah. And, and I think that that really helps you overcome your ego because when we reflect on ourselves when no one's around, that's when we're truly uncovering who we are. One of, one of the points, that, and I'm, I'm getting to the ego point, but, mm -hmm. and I loved what you just said now, that if you sat here and said, I have no ego, you can't say that. And I agree with the same for myself. If I sat here and said, I had no ego, that would be a complete lie. And there's a beautiful story of Benjamin Franklin that he had his uh, 13 precepts before he died. He had 13 qualities that he wanted to attain in life before he passed away. They included things like integrity, simplicity, honesty, virtue, etc. So these were his 13 set. And at the end of his life, he was asked, which one did you not attain? And he said, the 13th one. And they said, what was that? And he said, humility. And, and that for me, almost means that he conquered it because, you know, he was able to accept that he didn't conquer humility. That's almost like and how yeah, he, he yeah, ended it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I was like, this is amazing, you know? And it's a true story. And 13 Precepts are great. Read the book. It's there, Benjamin Franklin's book. And so the reason why I'm sharing that story is because the way you overcome your ego is to recognize that you're simply a channel or an instrument. When you recognize that you're an instrument and whether you believe in the universe, whether you believe in power, whether you just believe in mentorship, mm -hmm. you recognize that everything you're giving is because someone's given to you and someone's given to that person. And therefore you're becoming a vessel, an instrument, a vehicle for the greatest powers in the world and just being a channel for that. And that allows you to feel two things. One thing is you feel liberated because now it's no longer your burden. It's not like, oh my God, I've got to be the most amazing person in the world. It's not like, oh my God, it's all on me. You're actually like, wow, actually, yeah, I learned from that teacher and that teacher and that teacher and that teacher. And now I'm just a, a vessel for everything that I've gained and I'm able to channel, channel it and transfer it to others. So it liberates you from the pressure and the burden of like, oh my God, like everyone's expecting me to give the best talk of my life. <laughs> like, you know, but when you realize that you're not, you're just a channel and you're just a, right. a transfer mechanism. And, and the second part of, the second thing that it does is that it allows you, whenever your ego gets in the way and says, yeah, we're doing well, like I did that, I did that. You start recognizing and you get perspective and gratitude on the fact that no, actually I'm gonna pass this, whatever good's happening in my life, pass it to my teachers, pass it to the people that shared it with me. Because there is no one who is self-made. We talk about self-made yeah. millionaires, there is no one, that word shouldn't even exist. Yeah. Because no one, none of us are self-made. I'm not self-made. You're not, right. like, and that's not, that's not a... It's a cool term though. It's a cool term. But it's definitely not true. Yeah, and it's not true. And it's not a diss. Like I'm not, I'm not criticizing it. This is not like a yeah. slight dig at anyone of course. for using the terminology at all. All I'm saying is just that if we all truly reflect and we don't, I don't want the, anyone watching to think I have to be self-made. Because if you have to be self-made, then you're gonna to have to self fall too, yeah. right? And everything will be self, 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 and you'll fall on your own and you'll rise on your own. Humans are built to serve. Some people are built to serve the world, others wanna serve the 25 closest people to them. But in either case, humans are built to serve. If you're not happy right now, it's because you're not serving enough people or you're not serving the people in your life deeply enough. But whom do you serve? How do you serve? And once you've found the answers to these questions, how can you make money serving so you can help even more people? That's what we're gonna figure out together in this book. Now, 
Whether you had the book or not, it's an awesome one to pick it up. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. There's a three-step process to figure out who you are and then turn that into a successful business, helping people and having an impact. I call it who, why, and how. This three-step process I've used with people around the world and if you apply it to your life, will change your life for the better. Number one is your who. Your who is your single most important core value. What do you value as a human being? You've heard about core values. There's lots of exercises that help, help you find your top 10 core values. And then guess what? You forget what they are because there's too many. And if you're not actually filtering your life through your core values, you're not living the life that you want to live. So figure out one, get it down to one. Having clarity is super important, is powerful. The reason why you don't have as much clarity as you need is because you don't have the clarity of who you are. One word, your most important core value, your who, mine is believe. And an easy way to find it is thinking about who was your favorite teacher growing up and why? What movies do you love and why? What's your favorite song of all time and why? What did you love about your parents and how they taught you? And if you had kids of your own, what message would you want them to make sure that they hear and understand? There's a thread through all those questions. I call them the five essential questions. There's a thread through there that if you answer them, you'll figure out what your who is, your most important core value. That's the absolute first step that every human, let alone entrepreneurs, every human should go through to better understand themselves. Step number two is your why. Your why is your purpose. Your purpose comes from your pain. Why do you do the things that you do? Because it comes from pain. So I love helping entrepreneurs because I struggled the most as an entrepreneur. I love helping startup entrepreneurs because I struggled the most as a startup entrepreneur when I was 19 years old, wanting to quit on my business, making no money, being too ashamed and embarrassed to tell my friends that I wasn't having success. I was just struggling. And so if you think about the most painful moment in your life, your purpose, for the rest of your life is to help other people who are currently going through that same pain. There's lots of people who right now, today, this day, if you're watching this video right now, in this moment, there's tons of people who currently are facing the exact same problem that you faced earlier in your life. They're just a younger version of you, even if you're younger than them in age, right? You've been through something. The fact that you got out is impossible. It's crazy. It's a miracle that you are where you are compared to where you came from. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't exist. You shouldn't have this life that you have for yourself. Even though you want more, even though you're striving and growing and, and want to impact more, where you are right now shouldn't be possible, and yet it is. And that's gonna be hope to so many other people who feel like they can't break through. You represent hope to them. You represent possibility to them. You represent a, a better life for themselves. And helping those people will make you come alive for the rest of your life. Your who and your why, your who, your most important core value, and your why, your purpose, which comes to your pain, will never get old. You'll be 150 years old, sitting in a rocking chair in an old age home, and you'll still love doing that work. And then step number three is your how. Your how is how you teach people. Your how is how did you get out of the hole that you were in? How you got out of the hole that you were in is something you can then teach other people. You can teach people to get out of the hole by following the strategies that you followed. For you to get out of the hole that you were in, you probably tried a million different things. You tried so many things and you almost gave up and you were frustrated and you wanted to quit and another thing that didn't work and another thing that didn't work. And then finally, finally, after all that frustration and pain and anger and sorrow, you finally found something that worked and then your whole life changed. That thing that you found, that process that you followed is teachable to other people. It might have been random for you, but it doesn't have to be random for other people. You can be that voice, you can be that hope, you can be that inspiration, you can be that teacher, you can be that guide to help other people get out of the hole as well. So that's the three step process, the who, the why, the how. I went through it super quickly. You can find more inside the book Built to Serve. But if you wanna better know yourself and you wanna be able to turn that into an impactful business that can make you money and change the world, Go pick up Built to Surf. Hey everyone, I have been reading a bit from my friend's book, Evan Carmichael, Built to Surf, and I wanted to share this with you. So according to a study by Carnegie Mellon University, people with supportive spouses are more likely to give themselves the chance to succeed. They studied 163 married couples and found that people with supportive spouses were more likely to take on potentially rewarding challenges. Those who accepted challenges experienced more personal growth, happiness, and psychological well-being. Now, I can truly say that I've experienced that in my life. When I first met my wife, I was just starting out. I had never released a video. I hadn't created any content. And she was such an important part of feeling supported on that journey. So 
whether you're in a relationship, whether you're dating, whether you're married, or even if you're single, being supported by friends and a strong community is important. Uh, Built to Serve by Ellen Carmichael, great book on how you can find your purpose and also on reminding us that we can all make a difference in the world. Thanks, Evan. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that question of the day, I wanna know what is your why? What is your purpose? Who are the people that you want to help, that you love to help because it's what you used to be? Let me know what that is. Put it down in the comments below. And if you made it this far in a video, you're still here watching. I want to celebrate you. Believe Nation, we don't just watch videos. We do something about it. If that's you, if you commit to watching this video and then taking immediate action, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments and also tell me where you're from. I want to celebrate you. If I wanted to get to know you and Christoph really well, I have to spend time with both of you. So just say if I lived in Hamburg and every week we went out to dinner or lunch and I spent two hours with you and Christoph, then after a year, the three of us would get to know each other very well. Because every week you're spending two hours with me, you know what I like, what I don't like, when I'm cranky, when I'm upset, what makes me happy. Most people never spend any time with themselves. So how would they know what they want in life? Right? So the only way I can get to know someone is by spending time with them. Right? So if you ask someone, how much time do you spend with yourself? Most people say, they don't spend any time. They say, oh, when I walk the dog, that's when I spend time. That's my alone time. I say, no, that's you walking the dog. Because on one hand, you're walking the dog. And then on the other hand, you're probably like on, on your phone. phone. Yeah. Or um, if you live in New York, you're avoiding traffic, mm -hmm. you know, trying not to get run over. And so if some people say when I go to the gym, that's my alone time. No, you're lifting weights. You can't call that alone time. When I say alone time, I mean sitting down in your home quietly, no headphones, no music, no nothing, your eyes closed, maybe sitting cross-legged on the floor if you can, if not sitting on a chair, and just going inside and asking yourself questions, having a conversation. People say, oh, I don't have time for that. But it's so fascinating, right? If someone, all I say to people is spend five minutes with yourself every morning, having a conversation, the same way I would have a conversation with you and your husband. But people say they don't have time. But if their friend calls them up and say, hey, do you want to go out for dinner? They'll say, sure, let's go out for dinner. And they'll spend two hours with their friend having dinner. Um, but they don't have time for themselves. Do you know how many five minutes they are in two hours? There's 24 five minutes segments. Yes. That means you can sit with yourself every day for five minutes for 24 days straight if you skip dinner. People will make time for other people, but they won't make time for themselves. If you want to know how Jay Shetty unweeds his garden, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.